Clark County family is on a mission. They want you to be able to find out if the people watching your kids have ever been convicted of child abuse. Now, it's something they wish they would have been able to do before their little boy died. WSBT 22's Kelly Stopsinski is looking into their idea, and Kelly, they want to create a child abuse registry. And call it Kirk's Law, named after a toddler who prosecutors say died at the hands of his babysitter just over a year ago. It would be similar to the sex offender registry, a public database letting you know where offenders live and work and the crime they committed. I do want to thank everybody for coming out on this very, very cold, cold evening. One year. Well, why don't we go ahead and light the candles now? And the pain is still so raw. Our kind and eternal Father in heaven, we would ask, Father, that a blessing would be upon all of us, that we may be able to have peace in our hearts and in our minds, knowing that uh, Kirk is not with us. He was my world. He changed me into the woman I am today. Kirk Coleman's mom, Anissa, had to say goodbye when he was just 19 months old. Wednesday morning and I wasn't feeling well but Christmas was around the corner and I knew that I wanted to get him everything he wanted knowing she needed the money Anissa rolled out of bed and got ready for work dropped him off at Jackie's about 5 15 ish and he was perfectly fine he was tired. I said, I'll see you later, bud. Mommy loves you. Have a good day, like I always did. He said, love you, Mom. Six hours later, the daycare provider's husband called. Saying that Kirk stopped, or Kirk isn't breathing and on his way to the hospital because he was choking. But weeks later, a report from a pathologist said that's not what happened. Instead, he died from abusive head trauma. The pathologist found significant injuries to Kirk's brain, optic nerves, and both retinas. The Elkhart County prosecutor charged the home daycare owner, Jackie Rolston, with battery resulting in the death of a child. He didn't do anything. You know, he, he is an innocent little boy. And Kirk's family found out there was more. Somebody had came to our home and they said, do you know that she had a previous charge? And I ha and we looked it up and I just was baffled. Rolston was convicted of neglect of a dependent six years earlier. Court documents in that case say two-year-old Nathan Reed came home from Rolston's daycare with red marks around his neck and his neck was so sore he had to move his whole body to look left or right. A doctor said it was abuse. I can guarantee you if we would have known the previous charge, he would have never been there. But they didn't. Rolston was a longtime family friend. They trusted her. She wasn't licensed to run a daycare, but didn't have to be because the state says she was watching fewer than five children who were unrelated to her in her new Paris home. I was a single mom, and I wasn't, you know, yeah, I had my parents, you know, and family support, but... To get a background check, it's not cheap. You just need to be able to double check, triple check where your kids are going and who they're going to be with. Kirk's family is now pushing Indiana lawmakers for a child abuse registry. Anyone convicted of abuse or neglect in a child under the age of 14 would have to be on it for a certain period of time. And Kirk's family wants you to be able to use it for free. We're batting around several ideas. One would simply um, state that if you're on this registry, you couldn't take care of children uh, for financial gain. Um, others would, uh, another idea would be simply a registry that makes parents aware um, so that even if uh, these individuals are watching kids or allowed to watch kids, at least parents can go on this website and make sure that that individual is not on the registry uh, before sending their kids. State Senator Carlin Yoder says his staff is researching laws in other states and plans to draft legislation to introduce to a Senate committee early next year. We need to get it right and be fair to all parties, but at the end of the day, if we're protecting kids, it's a good thing. There are going to be consequences for as long as a person is on any public registry in employment, in their personal relationships, and their, their relationships with other people in society. Defense attorney Stan Rubel says it's important to make sure any registry is fair. Are there ways to challenge being put on the registry? Uh, what if there's a guilty plea? 
the person then challenges successfully on appeal, challenges the guilty verdict. Are they automatically taken off the registry? Uh, There's some due process uh, procedures for them to get off that registry. I don't want another family to go through what we've gone through the last year. We are here tonight to honor Kirk Antonio Coleman. He wasn't just my, my son, he was my first love and my best friend. And they hope to bring some good from the death of a sweet little boy they all loved so much. Jackie Rolston bonded out of jail after being charged in March. If convicted, she faces up to 30 years in prison. Her lawyer told me he doesn't comment on open criminal cases. It's also important to point out here, Michigan lawmakers are considering similar legislation right now called Wyatt's Law. It would require people convicted of felony child abuse to register for 10 years and misdemeanor child abuse for five years. The offenders would have to pay a $50 fee to keep the registry running. I'm Kelly Stopsinski, WSBT 22 News.